gonna keep my glasses on this time. Why not? Just for a change. Yeah. Then I'm gonna line up the the the, the rings right over my my eyeballs, <laughs> so I look funny. They're pretty the reflective. Video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Well, you at least had a big, huge weekend. Yeah, that may be why I'm a little loopy. Let's see. I guess uh, it started s- Sunday, really. I mean, no, we gigged on Saturday, mm-hmm. didn't we? Where did we? Where did we play? No, we didn't. Um, we didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, that was last week. Um, um, this weekend, I'll start it here. I'll start with what I did. I was recording with my um, client, Jenna, uh, from Wyoming. Yeah, Yeah, and I got to meet her this time. That's cool. Right. So Friday and Saturday, Mm -hmm. I was doing that uh, almost all of the day. Um, And then Saturday night, we had a lovely time going out to dinner with uh, Brian Stacks and his wife. Yes. So That's right. um, It was her birthday, I believe. Yeah, Or they were were celebrating it. And... um, yeah, we just went and had a um, fun dinner. Yeah. Uh, where did we go? Oh, the Gren- the Greenwich. Uh-huh. Which is close to the studio, and I've never really noticed it before. No, I didn't know it was there. But it was um, great. It was, uh, like, definitely... Um, very fresh. Yeah. Local. Yeah. They're actually really more of a pizza place, which I did not realize looking at their menu. But they had a lot of small plates, so we just focus on the small plates. Yeah, boy. Um, to avoid the cheese. Yeah, well, and and that was, um, gosh, that food was so rich. Um, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. one thing about, uh, you know, those kind the, of places. Those kind of places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're tiny little proportions, but somehow you still get so full. Yeah. Because it's very rich. It's very rich. Anyway, so yeah, we got home from that, and then I guess my big day started Sunday. Mm hmm. So I had a gig at Journey Church. Um, this one was in Castle Pines. Um, they have two locations and are about to open a third one next weekend. So the one, the, the gigs, or the gigs, <laughs> the services in Castle Pines, um, they have three um, instead of just one in Highlands Ranch. So that's, mm. it's a longer day. So went down and um, played there, left as soon as I played the last note, ran out of there um, because I had to get up to, what, what from, from Castle Pines all the way up to Colorado Sound. Right. To record a live music video with the Jacob Larson band. Where right. I'm singing backup. And I realized while texting with Kristen that morning that I did not have appropriate clothes. Oh, no. I thought I had dressed according to the, the plan, but I just didn't have the vision in my head correctly. And mm. so I, that's why I had to swing by home real quick. I was in and out in five minutes. Grabbed I just like grabbed everything black in my closet and just tossed it in the car. Right. And we figured it out when I got there. So then we did three solid hours of running songs live. Everyone was on their own uh, direct line and on their own right. in-ears. Um, I don't know, five cameras live. Uh-huh. Um, it was in Colorado Sound's Studio W, which I don't know if you've been in. I've not been in there, but I was around uh, I, I was around Colorado Sound a lot at the time they were building it. Oh, really? Yeah. So around when they were building Colorado Sound or just a Studio no, W? No, Studio W, oh, okay. which is that oh, other yeah. and it's a multimedia yeah. of course recording yeah. capabilities but then filming and yeah. and uh, it's real vibey. It's like got mm-hmm. sound treatment everywhere and cool lights. Like right. lots of dim like dim lighting but cool lights and right. couches and stuff like that. Cool artwork on the walls. It would be a great place for showcase actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure that would be that would be fun, um, it, it, because it is sort of like a venue, also. It's yeah. it's you know not just a soundstage. Yeah, it's got at some least good as areas. it has been explained to me, yeah. um, when they were building the thing. Um, and so then after that, I ran straight home again. Like as soon as we, as soon as Jacob said that's a wrap, I was like, I'm out. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> And uh, came home and picked you up, and then we went downtown to see Gary Goldman perform nearly two hours of comedy. Yeah, yeah. Gary Goldman is uh, definitely one of my favorite comedians, and uh, he's mom friendly, so uh, <laughs> feel free to check out Gary Goldman. Um, he actually has a tremendous special on Netflix called The Great Depression. He went through a uh, 
Oh, yeah. Depressive episode in his 40s or something uh, that was bad enough to cause him to need to be hospitalized uh, for the depression. And, and his comedy special details his, you know, descent into it and then his recovery. And uh, it is both hilarious and moving and it's really great um and and yeah so he's been one of my favorite comedians for like a decade um Mm -hmm. and uh he also does a lot of goofy uh observational stuff he's not just all heavy but Mm -hmm. that's what we were saying what sort of it's fun is he's got more range than most people he can do these very silly wordplay jokes and just observational Mm -hmm. um he used to have like a five minute bit about different types of cookies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he can do all these things, but then he can also get very deep and he can also be very cutting and like, yeah. you know. Yeah. He went from something on, on that level to <laughs> uh, Nazism and World War Two. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> like, he can. Whoa. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> Hit home. He can yeah. find the humor in kind of everything. You know, for coming from a performance uh, point of view, um, it was very generous of him to perform as long as he did. Uh, it's the same thing I say all the time, though. I I would have rather gotten less and had it really kill. Like, at no point was it not funny or boring or anything like that, but, you know, a tight hour that just or bowled even, you over. even hour 15, hour 20. Mm-hmm. I think it was about hour 20 where I was starting to think like we are not on a path toward we are nowhere yeah you can tell yeah (laughs) this isn't winding up not even close yeah and I was exhausted from getting up early and having a whole day and and yeah well and you know that's the thing that we're discovering about live comedy because neither of us have watched very much of it um what you go see when you go see live comedy is you're very often seeing people actually work out and develop their mm. show. And then you, you see the recorded special and you're getting what they've developed and edited down and condensed. And so they do these club shows so that they can work out material and work out structure and stuff. So you're seeing you're seeing things very in process a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember when we saw Jackie Cation and she literally had to pull out a piece of paper and go like, yeah. no, I really want to do this joke, but I just, I'm spacing on it. So let me pull out a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And, and there, a lot of these comedians could be doing much bigger venues, but one of the reasons they'll do the 200 seater comedy work shows is specifically because they are working on their material. Oh. So in a weird way, you're really getting to see, it would be similar to seeing bands working stuff out. And what's kind of yeah. interesting about that is that's what you used to go see. I even missed this, but from everything that you read, like the old way that bands worked is they would tour for a year or something. And then at the end of that tour, they would record a record. Uh-huh. Because they had tried out all this material, they were writing stuff during sound check. They were maybe maybe tonight let's make it go this way. Maybe tonight let's do this, and then at the end of that tour, they would do a record, and it was the most worked out version of what they had. Now bands do the opposite, where they do the record sort of in a vacuum, and then you go tour the record, where you just go out and recreate what you did in the studio. So. Comedy, oddly, is is sort of like music used to be, where what you're seeing when you go see a lot of live comedy, probably not the, the, the huge theaters that some of them do, mm-hmm. but when you go to a, a small club, you're seeing somebody work out their, and at the end of their touring, their comedy, then they're going to record the special. Yeah, makes sense. Well, you could tell that he was very much in the moment the entire time. Like I felt like the entire performance was responsive to the audience, responsive to the situation, very much off the cuff. Right. The pacing, the just like the body language, like he was just having a conversation with us for that entire time. And lots of like he built up inside jokes. Yeah. With the crowd. Yeah. That he kept of, coming kept, back yeah. to. You. And uh <laughs> it was pretty stunningly great. But it was interesting to see a show like that. Um you know, and and 
you know, like I said, small complaint. They gave us too much entertainment. But yeah, <laughs> as we've talked about small, a million times, I, I like I like my stuff real tight and worked out. So um, yeah. Anyway, that was quite a lot. Yeah. So I mean, I kind of wanted to give a rundown of that whole day, um, but I want to kind of rewind now and give uh, I don't know a little self report card on. Like yeah, my Sunday no, morning. I know, yeah. So last week, yeah, last week I had a less a bass lesson with Nate and talked about wanting to find my voice on bass. Mm-hmm. And we had a great discussion about that, um, which I'm not gonna necessarily go into detail here right now because sure, sure, sure. you know it's just a lot of a lot of great thoughts, which interestingly parallel voice, surprise, surprise, voice and bass are both instruments. <laughs> um, and then he recommended a podcast that Corey Wong of um, uh, Wolf, uh, Wolfbeck and uh-huh. Fearless Flyers has. And I listened to the episodes where he interviewed Victor Wooten and uh, Joe um, Dart, mm. bass player of uh, Wolfbeck and Fearless Flyers. And there was just, like, between the lesson and those two podcasts, there was so much, uh, there were so many, there's so much wisdom about finding your voice, but, le- like, recognizing you already have one. And that's, like, exactly what Nate said first. Like, and that's what I tell my students, like, find your voice. So, like, you're using it right now. Right. And it's informed by the people you've tried to sure. imitate your it's influences. Inform- yeah, yeah, your influences, what was playing in your house when you were growing up, you know, the culture you grew up in, the experiences you've had as a human being and all this stuff. I just didn't understand how that translated to an instrument you play with your fingers. Because to me, I can't tell the same stories with my fingers personally that mm-hmm. I can tell with my voice. But the the long and the short of it is that through these three influences last week, I declared in text to Nate, that I hereby declare I am good enough. And I will always keep improving. But I have been looking for permission, I guess. Right. And it's something I see in my voice students where, you know, they come to lessons to learn. And so presumably they're here to, like, hear my opinion and get my advice. Sure. And learn how to sing. And at some point when they get good enough, and that's a, that's a pretty loaded term, good enough, but when they when they feel like they have the technical chops that they need to express themselves, and I feel that too, I start kind of pushing them out of the nest a little bit, saying, like, they'll, they'll sing something and they say, how was that? And I'm like, well, how do you think it was? Right. How did it feel to you? Did it express what you wanted to express? Maybe think about this, maybe think about that, but you're the artist. It's right. your choice now. And so I got to that point on bass with Nate and those two podcasts I listened to, where I was like, okay, I, I can trust myself on bass. Right. I don't have to like ask like how did how did the original player play it? How did the original player play it? Right. And it came through Sunday morning at Journey Church. In little ways. Okay. Haven't so, heard this. Let's No. Yeah. Um I mean little ways, but the the one example I'll give you is there's a song that's kind of well they all have kind of a droney feel. <laughs> yeah. But there's one that has a particularly droney feel in the intro and the first verse. And I couldn't really tell exactly what the bass was doing. I thought maybe he was pedaling eights up high Mm -hmm. or something like that. But I was like, you know, what I think sounds cool is to pedal octaves going do 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 and just letting them both ring. I like how that sounds better. And I I didn't like ask anyone's permission to play it that way. I was like, this is what I think sounds good. Right. On this song here in this room with these people today. And so um, there were, you know, maybe three or four such instances where I either did something different from the original recording because I liked it better. Right. Or I wasn't sure what the original recording did and I just trusted myself that, like, my choice is going to be fine as long as I'm listening to what's going on around me. That's a huge part of the... It felt huge. Yeah. It felt huge. And it, it, it I think it... It even affected some of my entrances, where sometimes right. I might have snuck in, be like, "I think I play here," blah 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 blah. blah. You know, <laughs> I was like, "I don't know if I play here or not, but I'm gonna play here." I'm gonna play. So- here. <laughs> I think that's a major thing about being 
I, 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 I don't know, struggling for language, but like to be at a certain level as a musician, some of it is feeling like you have permission to yeah. just take up space and yeah. make and decisions. Ma- and- exactly. It's make decisions. It's not like, am I making the right decision? Yeah. Am I making the decision that everybody is going to say, oh, she knows what she's doing? No, it's like, I'm going to make the decision that I think is right. And right. that makes it right, basically. Yeah. And it's um, it's interesting. I mean, some of it is a confidence thing and and maybe not all of it is just confidence. Maybe some of it is just it's trusting yourself. Yeah, and and yeah. um and having the courage to just leap a few times. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's a little part of it is going, you know what? I'm going to just try what I think should be here. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, it's weird. It's that's a such a fascinating thing. I mean, I of course am fascinated by the idea of um you know, different musicians' voices. What well, we were talking about. I mean, my Big goal as a guitar player, like the my dream as a guitar player was to be one of those guitar players that if you heard a song and you didn't know I was playing on it, you would instantly go, oh, that's that person. Like so many of the greats, like Hendrix or Clapton or like all these guys, you just, you hear it and you're like, oh, that's definitely, mm-hmm. if it's not Clapton, it's somebody trying to copy Clapton because that's just what he sounds like. Mm -hmm. And, and I always, that was my big dream was that that's the kind of player I wanted to be was like, Oh, um, I didn't ever need to be the best or the fastest or the awesomest. I just wanted to have like a very recognizable kind of voice. Um, and I've regretted it a little bit because I wish I would have worked on sounding more commercial (laughs) and more like, um, other players and stuff. Cause so many other players are so much better at like, you know, covering you, songs, covering accurate, songs yeah. and copying other people's solos and stuff. And I can, I can muddle my way through it, but that's not what I focused on for most of the time I played guitar. Um, and we were talking about all the things you can do, like loving another musicians, whatever they do, but rather than learning their licks, sort of like pulling out like, well, but what are they doing in that lick? Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to practice doing a similar musical thing. You know, we were talking mm-hmm. about Eric Johnson, who very often plays in, he plays his notes in groups of five. But so rather than practicing literally Eric Johnson licks, I'm going to practice playing my own things that I think of in groups of five. Mm-hmm. Because I like that sound when people group them in fives, but I don't want to sound just like him. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to like take the idea and run with it. Mm-hmm. But I'm so glad to hear that. That is a major, major development as far as uh, bass. You know, it just all adds up little by little. You know, I've been working on all these Murder by Death songs right. and trying to play them like Tyler plays them, which is making different choices than I make. So, you know, I've let his thinking influence me. But then after a couple months of working on those songs, I stopped checking how he did things and started just letting letting it come out in a way that was easier for me. Right. So I kind of, like, the two things kind of merged. Right. Where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to learn from someone, but now that I've learned enough, I'm going to let it be me. Right. And, and that seems to, like, that plus the permission to be me, I feel like I've reached, you know, just a tiny little step up recently in in my bass playing and my identity. I, I think it will know? I think it will move your all of your stuff up. Um because there is that different thing as a musician. I see it in a lot of up and coming artists where, you know, when you don't feel like you're good enough and that's different from being like, oh I'm the best in the world or, or like no one could do this particular job better than me. It's just like, no, I'm going to do fine. Yeah. You know, and, and like you, you just come across differently yeah. Yeah. when you know, Hey, you know, I, maybe I'm not the best singer in the world, but I'm plenty good. Yeah. You know, and like, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I yeah. have every right to be where I am. I have every yes. right to be doing what I'm doing. Like, yes. Um, I don't need to be like, Hey, thanks for giving me a shot. Like, you know, yes. It's like, no, I, I'm going to do a good job. 
And and yeah. maybe I'll make some mistakes or maybe, you know, yeah. sure you could, you know, someone in the world might come up with a cooler part than me on this particular one, <laughs> but I'll get them on the next one. So, you know, um, yeah. that is so awesome. That's such a fun thing. Um, well, so what else? Um, let's see. You went skiing. Oh, yeah. So after that long, crazy day on Sunday, I got up <laughs> early again on Sunday or Monday morning because an old water ski friend of mine has right. been in town and she's been skiing in a bunch of different places. And yesterday, yeah, yesterday was her last ski day. Mm-hmm. And so um, she was staying with a friend in Dillon, which is like 10 minutes from A Basin. So I got up early. Drove up to the mountains and we went skiing yesterday and it was gorgeous. There was like six inches of new snow. Whoa. Yeah, it snowed quite a bit up there. Huh. I didn't get there right at opening because I was a little slow moving in the morning Mm. and the traffic was a little heavy, but um, I think I was on the slopes by 930 and then I skied for two hours, an hour and a half, and then I went and picked her up because she's even more slow moving. Mm, I see. I didn't get that part of the story. Actually, to be fair, they drove from Aspen. That day. Oh, they that were coming morning. down. So that yeah. that's a couple of hours maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, we skied a good three hours in the afternoon after I got back um, from picking her up and just had a, a great time and it reminded me how much I love it. And I have already rearranged my schedule a little bit to go skiing more often the next couple of months. Well, we were just having that conversation where you were like, because you've bought a ski pass and yeah. you were like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have bought it. You know, schedules didn't work out and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I said, I think it's completely worth it just to have the option. And now, and see, cause now you have the option and yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going to try to ride this one out. You know, I've been really digging the cold weather lately mm-hmm. and I'm not looking forward to the heat of the summer so much as I used to. Right. Even though it there's snow piled up in front of our house and it's going to be there for a while, I'm going to probably ride. A, a, a Basin stays open later than anywhere else. Okay. I they, didn't, yeah. they often close in June. In June? Yeah. Wow. Is it super high up there? Is that why? Or is it it's, just in a... Yeah. I mean, it's on the other side of Loveland Pass. Oh. I don't know what the combination of factors is. Because there are, the way the mountains kind of, you've got weird little pockets of different weather. Yeah. You know, it's like Palisade, Colorado, oh, which yeah. is also in the mountains, but their weird little pocket. Allows them to grow peaches. Allows them to grow tons of peaches. <laughs> and it's just because that particular valley has a different, Yeah. the air moves however it moves. and Yeah. Yeah. So I might have a couple months of overlapping snow and water skiing. That is, I'm going to really encourage you to do it. I think you, yeah. you were so happy about it. You are so happy I was, about it. I am. Yeah. 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 I, I really, really enjoyed it. It's yeah. magical. It's yeah. so gorgeous. So I'm going to push you a little to. And we live right here. Yeah. I mean, Lisa had to fly, buy plane tickets. Right. She bought day tickets to all these places she skied. Which are very I mean, expensive. Aspen, Breckenridge, Copper, uh, Buttermilk, and... You know, Jenna was telling me, yeah, 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 yeah. It is not cheap, right? And here I have a midweek season pass, and I can drive up and be there an hour and ten minutes. Why am I not doing this all the time? Yeah, I know. We live here. <laughs> I know. Anyway, it's, uh, well, gosh, how much have we done? Not all that much, boy. You mean what? Time wise. Oh well, it doesn't have to be thirty minutes. Well, it doesn't. You know, um, I just feel I like. Mean, um, I mean, it's. We're getting this one in under the wire here. We're getting this one in <laughs> under the wire. It has been, you know, it, it was funny. Um, I was telling somebody just the other day, like, we more than being just so relentlessly busy, it has been just as much, like, inconveniently busy, like, things just falling on top of each other or mm. things needing to move and, like, you know, you, you thought you were free Thursday, but then a rehearsal from Tuesday got rescheduled oh. to Thursday so people could make that. And just like, it's just been so up in the air that it's mm-hmm. been, it, it you know, it's not like working 12 hours a day, but it just like constantly seems like something's coming up and, oh, now I can't do that because of this. And now I can't do that because of this. It's been, at least mm-hmm. for my schedule, it's just been like. You might be seeing more of that than me. Oh, yeah. The, the last couple of weeks have just been. 
all over the place. Hard to complain though. I mean, you know, things are going great. Um, and we're doing the music stuff. We're living the life. I mean. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, we've got the Oriental Theater coming up. Yep, we're going to... Petty Nick's Experience is playing at the Oriental Theater um, on Saturday. Saturday. So, you, you know... I hear ticket sales are going well. That's good. That's good. I always feel like we're a little soft there. Yeah, but uh. um, Vic ran a few ads, which we don't normally have to do. And right. It, it, I mean, I think the first day it, it sold like 80 tickets. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we were talking about... Um, we won't maybe mention the person's name just because who knows if they want it talked about, but a group of 20 ish people is coming. Um, and they, they messaged us to say they were coming. Oh yeah. Um, and it's because, uh, I think it was their stepfather or someone in their family had passed away and apparently he had been a fan. And so they were, uh, coming to this show in, as a as a remembrance type of thing or 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 what have you mm-hmm. um and I just felt myself very moved by that like it's so nice that people would like it enough to do that and then as I was saying the other day like it's amazing we've been doing this long enough and doing this well for long enough that you know this kind of thing is like mm-hmm. overlapping. I mean, someone who, you know, apparently they'd been to a few shows and they really liked it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and, you know, mm-hmm. now the family's coming for a remembrance thing and it's like, wow, that's, that's kind of, this is starting to be like <laughs> some like life events yeah. are starting to happen around this. Um, I mean, not, you know, gosh. Uh, and, and of course your heart goes out to the the family. We all know what that's like, but um but I was like very moved that people would, you know, choose yeah. that as a, I'm sure they're doing lots of other things, but like, you know, um, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that's, um, yeah, very nice. Yeah. And, uh, it's great to know that, um, that people have, you know, liked it enough to. Yeah. And really connected with it. Really connected with it. Cause that's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can't take a lot of credit. It is a tribute. It's songs that yeah. other people wrote and whatever. But, um, you know, it's nice that people connect with it and, and and have a good time. And, you know, we've talked about it before. There is an aspect of it where it's nice to kind of um, do our very small part to keep some of that music uh, alive and in people's minds a little bit. So mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's, uh, I think let's, that's good. let's get out of here. Um it's late. It's time it's, for TV. It's time for some TV. Uh, TV and cuddles. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because the other night I was trying to make a cute joke and I said, when are you going to start paying me rent for all the space you take up in my head? <laughs> because you take up kind of a lot of real estate. And then you said... Well, it's not a very good neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. And it was so <laughs> funny to me that I couldn't even laugh. It was one of those where <laughs> you, just... you self guard, you're just more it's so funny, you're just more baffled that like <laughs> that I got you like that? Yeah, you just you just burned me so it's, bad. It's rare, but when I do, I do. <laughs> I you were like a sniper. I mean <laughs> I'm just out here machine gunning, just throwing stuff around, hoping it hits something. You're starting sentences you don't know how they I end. don't even know what it's going to come out of my mouth. Uh, you said that, and I like, it didn't occur to me right away. So it was maybe, maybe like 10 seconds later. Yeah. Like, oh. That was part of it. It was still conversational. It's just like, yeah, but it's a really bad neighborhood. <laughs> I don't know much rent there. And it is a bad neighborhood. <laughs> It's dangerous. It's not a good neighborhood. Really run down. Lots of stuff's boarded up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it smells a little bit. Uh, <laughs> In your mind? Yeah. Um, anyway, Take out the trash once I, in a while. I know. I know. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much. Um, and uh, we love doing this, and we're so glad that people watch and uh Lisa listened to a bunch of them oh my she gosh she feels like she so knows nice. you oh yeah that's amazing yeah well thank all of you and um we're just gonna see you next week yep as always we are sponsored by performance high voice and music studio and no one else so we'll see you next week <laughs> bye